Oh, happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to your daily lighting critique. We have a few submissions today, nothing crazy. I wanted to start off with Sunny to welcome uh, her to the group. Um, this is just a lovely concept art image that Sunny uh, submitted for her uh, first uh, assignment in the Power of Light course. So this is just finding an image uh, and, and commenting on how the artist who created it utilize the things that we talk about in the course, directing the viewer's eye, creating mood, shaping, all that good stuff. Um, and so she talked about you know, how these red, the red patches in here and these red colors are so telling throughout the shot and how they complement the blues and the cool surroundings of the night sky. Um, it's th this light throwing this beautiful shaping on the bear and on, on the little kid down here all just very very cool stuff i also really like the the way that the the uh lantern lights the lights from the um these uh it looks like the shops uh paired with their reflection in the water really kind of leads the viewer's eye um back this way in both directions back towards the character kind of pinches and leads us back to where the action is happening and that's really nice um I love the glow of the, the light on the, the buildings here, the glow on the girl. Just everything's just really well positioned and really, really well done. Um, I would like, you know, if you, when, you, when you're starting a project, oftentimes you'll get concept art like this on an animated film, like you're starting a sequence or some shots. Um, and anytime you see stuff like this where it's like clearly well thought out, um, there's a good architecture to it. And there's a lot to work from from there. So this is really, really great submission. And uh, I thank you for sharing it, Sunny. Um, now I do want to hop into uh, a couple of the uh, submissions from today. We've got Abishak on the line. <laughs> I got to quit saying that like a radio host. Um, and we will, let's see. Okay. Close this one because I accidentally saved this a different thing. Okay. So we've got your original reference. We have your older version that we went through yesterday and, and uh, did some comp tweaks on, and now we have the update. Um, update looks 100 times better. It looks so much better. Um, really big improvement overall. Like, look at, look, just look at the headlights. Like, look how much the headlights have, now have more shaping. The bounce in the front is a lot better. You're getting that brightness on the wheel well on the right side. Um, you know, the, the shadow density is, is looking better than the original. Like I said, the original kind of is, is dusty, and, and I, I think I understand what they're trying to do, but it's, it's really problematic in there. And I think that what you have is, uh, uh, is much, much better. Uh, let's take a look here. I think, judging from the reference, a couple things that I would change would be or that I would update would I would darken a little bit of the light passing through because it, it seems to in and this 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 can happen sometimes in the comp uh, if you start moving things around the color of the street is now brighter back through it and 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 if you look at the reference it's actually darker back there um, I think that you can darken this area and then what we're seeing through the window there a little bit more um, and then additionally, one thing about the, uh, the reference to is a little bit of light on the front of this tire. I would try and get a little bit of that on there as well. And I think that's about it. Does anybody else see anything? I think that's, that's pretty much it. Let's look at the, is there a license plate on there? Yeah, this, this front license plate area, um, I would just tighten the, the um, perimeter on that a little bit too. Like there, there's, a, there's like a metal outline on it. Because right now this looks a little bit like a black hole. And this, just by having that little rim on the outside of, the, of, the outside of it, or just making that a little bit brighter, um, kind, of, kind of defines that space a little bit more. But this is looking really good. This is looking... Um, I wish I wish there was more that we could do to it to, like I said, push it beyond what the reference is. But but I think I think for what they're asking you, uh, this is this is a good step. All right, and then we have Jordan. All right. So Jordan, the the I I don't know how to uh, say. Oh, go ahead, I, Yeah. I, 
I think you forgot my second one. There's a second one in there. Let's see. Oh yes. Oh yeah. It, 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 it's after eleven o'clock. There we go. That's. Right. <laughs> um, let's take a look. I didn't see this one yet. All right. I'm just gonna pull up the the reference in the new one. Okay, so this is this is your most recent update, and then this is the reference, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for this one, let's see, much better. The, the the edge of the glass is getting a lot better, but this is a little bit too strong. Soften that a little bit more, because it's, it's more yeah. just like a hint of that. Yeah, I also point out that, uh, but uh, it's almost time for this uh, meeting, I so didn't update it. Mm. Yeah. And then just watch. There's a little bit of the brightness right in here around the gun. I do kind of, like in the in the um, the reference. I kind of all the the bright specular highlights are really isolated to so just kind of the barrel in here. Um, and with this one, it's it's see, it's kind of nice that we're picking up more of that. But just maybe just tone down the specular highlights in, in through here. Um, okay. Let's look at the bullets. Bullets feel, bullets feel good. Maybe just a little more saturation in them. And then... Yeah, just watch this hard line down the edge here. Right on the edge. Because... It's not cool. Not quite as sharp in the reference. All right, cool. The drinking glass, the the liquid inside the glass looks better. Um, this one just gets a little bit lighter as it reaches the opposite rim. So I would just lift this on the edge of it uh, just a little bit more. Just lift that value. So that uh, light should pass. Uh, should I pass the light more? That's what so, you're so here's here's what's happening with it. It looks like is that light is penetrating through until here, and then on the opposite side, it's picking up a little bit of the light on the outside there, so it starts to get a little bit brighter on the edge there. Okay. So so just and, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe just don't let it get that, there. Yeah, and that caustic is still uh, no. I'm not able to get it actually. Okay. I mean, if you. Uh, I uh, made it uh, with uh, um, tried it with uh, black and white, but uh, still that uh, white color is uh, not able to get through this. Okay. And uh, I tried to search in Google also that how can we uh, uh, get the caustic in AOVs if we make a custom pass. I I would yeah I mean I wouldn't worry about doing it as an AOV. I would because I don't I don't I would I would just set up a separate render even a separate Maya file just for doing that. Um, and then make sure that, you know, like take this scene, file save as, um, and then just like throw away all of the lights and that, of uh, the existing lights and just try and make something that, that spits out caustic at the other end and then comp that in. Cause like, again, the one, the one really good thing about what these challenges are is that you can, you can render from multiple places. It's just a still. So you don't have to worry about um, uh, you don't have to worry about some of the complications that come with an animated shot. So I I would just do it, and I would even do that in an animated shot. I would just uh, render it because the goal is to have a set of images, or in this case, just one image that is your caustic light being spilled onto the table. Whether it's an AOV or a separate render does not matter to us or really anybody else. 
It's just about it's about getting that data so you can use it in your final image. So don't get okay. held up on just doing it as an AOV. No, no. Actually, I tried with that uh, thing only. Actually, I made a different caustic file, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, still, uh, I don't know how to render it out. And uh, because uh, what is happening, I'm not able to get uh, the plane actually proper. Mm -hmm. I think I already tried uh, putting the same plate mm -hmm. uh, in uh, that plane, mm -hmm. and uh, I adjust the UVs, but uh, it's also not working. Mm. very well well then it may it may just be a failed experiment like if we had more time we could figure it out but um in, in, yeah yeah currently it's uh, friday okay so yeah i have time because then i know you have to you have to turn it in on monday right yeah yeah by monday i need to send okay well i'd say give it you know give it a, <coughs> a little bit more time uh you know maybe maybe give it a try today and then if not then just like it's it's just a thing that didn't make it in the final version i was just thinking uh, uh, for that i will just uh, change the color of shadow yeah just what yeah you, you yeah you can just 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 something to indicate that it yeah like, yeah yeah cuz like in the in the reference um we can uh, also do that because uh, yeah the in the reference is not yeah in the reference yeah, it's just a spill of color yeah because it's uh, looking like shadow has been a uh, change to the color mm -hmm. yeah i think we can do a little cheat on that also yeah yeah i mean i think i think what they're looking for is your ability to read the reference and try and match it so the fact that you're you're going to that point i think is a good thing so okay all right cool let's hop over into jordan's uh, and we'll take a look at this guy here all right jordan uh i got i should have practiced saying aurori borealis i think that's how you say that um, I just terrible at it. I saw your note about adding stuff to the house. That's cool. We'll do that. Yeah, do that in the next iteration uh, to break up those shadows a little bit. I, I think that we can still go a little brighter on oops, on the house itself and around that. Just a few more midtones, and let's warm this up a little bit. And I think we could spill that a little bit more strongly. Into the set, let's see. And maybe even, even just glow it up a little bit too. So this is, this is a little janky because I just slapped it together there, but like adding a little bit of that warmth and that glow around there. And, and I would even spill it out a little bit more, like have, have the, the light even kind of come out. Have it kind of come out uh, even, yeah, even further away from the house, I think would work really well. Um, because I think it's looking great, and I think your color scheme is great. Um, the, I, w I want a little bit more synergy, uh, a little bit more. Um, I was going to use the word synergy, but I've, I've, <laughs> I don't like that word very much. Um, so basically, what I'm seeing is this is like a wall of green. Um, you know, the mountain is a wall. There's like green, then there's blue, and there's more green here, and it's kind of broken up into very like specific chunks. I like that color scheme. I just want to see a more like spotted and and more variation within the objects and within the areas, um, because then it makes it feel like a larger landscape and less uh, about it being, um, you know, because because like in small spaces you see these kind of blocks of light, but in larger spaces it's so big that the area that the light has has the opportunity to fluctuate a little bit throughout it, um, and then I would darken. Uh, this 
guy back here and treat it more as a rim light on it coming in from these lights. Um, and so, yeah, the, the way that this one kind of is, because this is kind of darker over here, and it's more about the uh, the phenomenon, the Aurora Borealis happening back off in the distance, back behind him and shining light again, like kind of on the rim. Um, and that way we can kind of create these larger land mass, these larger forms that kind of filter us towards the center. And then, um, make sure I'm not looking at my color adjusting thing, but, and then looking at this, like the, the snow in the trees is a little dark, a little contrasty. I would, I would gamma them up a little bit and, and lift their um, kind of mid-tone value um, to make sure that we're not seeing them get in this, this super dark range. Um, but other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. It's a great setup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think this is looking good. Uh, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. If uh, that uh, trees behind that back is very blue stone, then that will be kind of moonlight, right? Yeah, but it's but like it's odd that it's only hitting there, right? Like that's yeah. odd. I mean, I I like so, that I like that there's moonlight mixed in with this aurora borealis, but um, it needs to there, there just needs to be more variation within it throughout the environment. We should I I think uh, we should. Uh, Improvise that uh, moonlight to the edge of the top of the house. It's kind of rim light that you just uh, oh, told yeah. him, no? Yeah. About that mountain. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That will be very good. Yeah. I think that's a good call. Yeah, so incorporate that moonlight a little bit more in there. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good call. All right, cool. All right. Well, that is all for today, everybody. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you back again on Monday. If you need anything, uh, let me know. I will be a little out of touch this weekend. My daughter turns one, and so we're gonna. My parents are in town, and we're gonna do a little thing. But uh, but I will circle back with you all on Monday, and I look forward to hearing you all uh, and seeing you all then. All right, take care, everybody. Have a good weekend.